Okay, everyone, welcome to the q and session. Um, so today we're going to cover basically two sub topics, uh, the q and V8 emulation in general, and then uh, a short story about the Android emulator work we've done so far. So um, pretty much, you know, both Peter and Alex have done tremendous work to add V8 support for the q and architecture, which is a massive undertaking. We did that in really short time, so that's pretty impressive. So thanks for that, and let's get into the details. So. Peter will do the general QMU stuff, and Alex will do the, um, the Android stuff. Okay. Um, right, so this is just a quick summary of where we are with the stuff we've done. So, uh, V8 instruction sets support. I think this was mostly done by Nice Connect. Um, so as I said, you use a emulation based implementation of all the nuances in the VFP basic industry instructions. Um, so since Mars Connect, we kind of filled in the holes, implemented all the bits of V8s that there's like handful of instructions that you in 32 bit site as well. We added the option of crypto instructions, fix some of the little bits of bugs that are crept in the missing instructions. So that's all down there and we tested it pretty solidly. And then we moved on to the system mode emulation, which I did into Chromium 2.1, I think that's what we did. Um, so you can now actually run a complete system with a 64-bit very much 64 kernel, um, run all your user space codes on that. So that's, that's kind of the two main modes of the operation of those both down look. Uh, we're moving on to uh, debug architecture. Um, which you need because in, in the old V7 32-bit stuff, GDB mostly worked without any support from the kernel or the CPU for hardware debug because there were a bunch of V4, V5 CPUs that didn't have a debug at all. Um, so it was all just write breakpoints instructions in, do everything manually. Uh, for V8, because debug is a required part of the architecture, uh, if you want GDB to work at all, then you've got to implement the CPU support in your model. So that's what we've been doing, and the patches for all the bits of those are now all mailing lists and going through review, so they should make it into upstream uh, pretty shortly, I think. Um, the other thing we've been doing is PSCI support. So again, for VA, kind of the standard way you move the SAP system is all your secondary CPUs start off in the power down state, and the kernel uses PSCI calls to start them up. So PSCI is kind of mandatory. And the work from Bob Henry that Bob has then taken up and cleaned up is again now on the, all on the list and going through code reviews, so that should also get there shortly. And then you'll be able to actually run an SMP system uh, at the moment. It restricts you to a video process config. Um, so those are kind of big in the works things. And the other thing not mentioned on this slide, but which is probably going to arrive at some point in the next year or so, hopefully the next six months or the next year, is probably going to be trust zone support, um, where in the we were working on 30-bit stuff, and there's guys from Sidelinks working on 64-bit stuff, so those two sets of patches should come together. And that's kind of that's a pretty major bit of functionality, so it's kind of hard to say exactly when it's going to land, but it will arrive. So that is our current state of V8. Um, so if anybody's got any questions about stuff that would make sense. So, uh, probably that's a good question about the other support. Please take the mic. Um, things that really trust me would be um, the other support in QMU. And as to, I, I know that there's been some patches proposed um, of the state of that at the moment. So, EO2 support is. The guys from Xilinx are, I think, working on it. There's not been a great deal of push for having support for it from sort of the NARA member companies, so it's not something we're actually working on. But it will. So I'm working on it in the sense that patches arrive and I review 
them with my monastery maintainer hat on them, but it's not currently on our to-do list. Um. Any other questions? Right. Right. Um. Oh, that was what we uh, talk about what we did a, a little bit of history about the Android emulator uh, as it currently exists. Um, it's based on a very old form of Premium. It's quite heavily modified. Uh, there's a load of additional uh, features that Google added to the emulator. Uh, the main main thing being that uh, the images it runs are specific images that are built to run on the emulator and use a number of um, additional services that have been added by Chromium, the main one being the Chromium Pipe, which was brilliant before Vertire was, was a, a major thing. And through that pipe, um, ADB works, so you can get your console and, and, and debug interface. And also the GPU emulation goes through that, so that's a GPU pass-through. And a bunch of other things for, for emulating bits of hardware. Um, I think there was an attempt to backport and um, AR64 support into the, into the old version of Chromium, but it was, it was doomed to failure. Um, basically, didn't, there was too much of a change in, in the rest of Chromium, which is a lesson in why you should stick to upstream. So, <coughs> what we added is a, a new um, virtual board to Chromium called Branching, which is another type of goldfish. Uh, it's basically a, a Vertio based board, so there's all, all the hardware, all the prop devices, any networking that it does is using the Vertio um, framework. We implemented or well, ported forward the um, ADP pipe service and the ADP backend so you can get your ADP shell and do debugging. And we also um, updated the Android console so it uses the Chromium Monitor interface. So we've got some future plans. Um, we're talking and currently talking with Google, um, who have seemed very keen on moving forward to having the new Android emulator based on upstream Chromium. So even if not everything that we've worked on gets upstream into Chromium itself, we're able to have a, a constantly updated and small delta against the mainline Chromium for the Android emulator. Um, We've got to do, get the 32-bit Android working on the branching board as well, because the old 32-bit board um, expects a different set of hardware. Obviously, as I mean, continues to develop, as mentioned, the trust set and so forth will be option to uh, take advantage of the trust set technology. Uh, and the main thing that um, you need to get something that's performance is the GPU support and pass-through stuff, which Google are working on at the moment. The RFC. Oh yes, and uh, we should we'll be sending out some uh, RFC patches to the upstream soon to at least uh, give uh, the upstream community an idea of where the, where it's going and whether or not it's going to be acceptable for upstream. Any questions on the Android case? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, what sort of items do you see as uh, most problematic, I guess, to kind of uh, rejoin the fork, basically, uh, once they've been moved to the... I guess, oh, well, I think the, the biggest one is whether or not upstream will accept the Android pipe, because that was out for written before Vert.io was, was a thing. Um, but it might, if it's uh, small enough and self-contained, that upstream's happy with it. And they can just merge that as is. Um, if upstream would rather have a more standard approach, then we'll have to see if it's feasible to re-engineer it and to use the vert IO stuff that's already there. The GPU emulation, I suspect, would never go upstream. I think the best we can aim for is having something that's nice and self-contained, so it's, you don't have to have a full a real pain rebasing every time you update. Is there, is there a reason for that, I'm curious? There are other, well, at the moment, several people are um, suggesting various uh, ways of doing the GPU pass through, and they're all very different in the way they do it. And I suspect upstream doesn't want to have three different implementations. So 
maybe, maybe, maybe in the far future when, when things are all settled. But obviously, from Android's point of view, I want something that will work with their current build and they don't want to change it after. Yeah, so just want to clarify that the thing we're targeting towards first is to just provide a basic set of patches so that you can take AOSP, build it, and just run it in upstream, get, get a graphics interface and stop basically working. Right? So the two main features that we're not working on in the NARO are TT revelation and skinning. And the reason I said this, like I said, right, these are complicated things, there are controversy surrounding that upstream, so it's not something we can land short term. So what we are trying to do is take action towards those things that can land upstream soon, um, and, and thereby provide a good base for Google to have something that's relatively self-contained that they can keep rebasing um, on an ongoing basis. And then hopefully, along the line, uh, that down the road, you know, you'll have some upstream GPU relations support that we can actually leverage, and, and everything could be completely upstream. Yeah, um, I mean, that could be an ideal, but it's not necessarily a short term goal. Okay. I think you kind of have to treat the upstreams, upstreaming approach in a similar way that if you look at the kernel stuff, it's like for, it took an awfully long time for bits that were originally Android specific in the kernel to get into mainline, and it's a continuous process, and you start with the easy stuff and kind of try to get it away and go. And maybe some things might never get upstream or not in not upstream in a shape that really resembles what I have at the moment. But you kind of have to keep trying to think of it as a months and years kind of thing rather than a days and weeks thing. So this was just in case anyone wanted some, some practical examples of how you uh, use the RPA stuff. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, the models that we use are entirely Vertio based. So, if you take the current um, mainline kernel and do a dev config build, come up with a AOS 64 user space, that's an exercise for you, um, stick it in a init RD, then it will run on, on a mainline um, on master permit branch now, in fact, on the permit team on one release. Uh, if you add Additional Vertio features, so there's the um, all the Vertio configs, the 9P for the file system sharing, and you can have a you know, more complete um, system emulation of block devices and network devices, um, and even share share with your um, home file system. So I've just put two examples of how to get that. Up there. Has anyone got any actual usage questions, or has anyone tried to do this and not got it working? <laughs> so we could say that we do have just that idea too. <laughs> so we do have these uh, more sort of thorough set of instructions, right? On a blog post on the core, the core down blog, which is the core team's blog, where Alex has written out uh, more instructions. And otherwise, the world could just send us emails and ask questions. I guess. Yeah, the other questions. Hmm? I was going to say that just references the blog post. Right, that's the fabulous blog post. Yeah. But that's all we had. Uh, we've had quite a few questions prior to connecting about how do we actually use this, what are the requirements, what can I do with Android. So I was hoping that a lot of those people who were asking those questions would be here, but that's really seen that way. So unless there are other questions, uh, you guys are off early. <laughs> Sorry, I just didn't know that. What's the status of like when you're looking at stat of ARM v8.1 support? Yeah, it's just in case anybody cares, we actually just added the QMU AR64 target to Lava. We created a couple of Debian images with Vertio support, so if you want to play around with it, it is available in the validation lab. Anything else? All right. That's it then. That's right. I remember you. I was looking at you.
Okay. Yeah, just picked up a short part of it. Yeah, well, hi. I, was, I, was, I recognize your face, but I couldn't find a place where I recognize it. Thanks for making a Thank <laughs> you.